Dear listener, this is Dunamis International Gospel Center, Abuja. Dunamis is a Greek word for power. The message you're about to listen to is packed with information and revelation from God's word to bring revelation and restoration to your life and destiny. Dr. Paul Amenche is the senior pastor of Dunamis International Gospel Center, Area 1, Gariki, Abuja, as it brings God's word to you to have a blessed time listening. As we and let no life be the same. I make demands on the grace for impartation, grace for instruction, grace for discipleship. I make demands on the precious oil. Thank you. What a privilege and an honor to wash the body of a road to be called into your presence as your own. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Without glorifying, you are welcome. It's just healing a wound right now. It's, it's, it's not a physical wound. It's an emotional wound. It's just healing it right now. It's just removing a headache that is a demonic headache from somebody right now. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Let us celebrate his presence here this morning. Go ahead and celebrate his presence with a clap and a shout of praise. Give him a bigger, bigger, bigger clap and a shout of praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 2005, and it is loaded. Look at your neighbor, say it is loaded. Please help me walk to five people, shake hands with them. Welcome them to the year 2005. Tell them the year is loaded. It is loaded. Welcome them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. To wash a body of the To be coming to your presence As your room What a privilege What a privilege To wash a body of the To be coming to your presence Give me a big clap as you take your seat. Sound, remove every buzz and then fine tune the feedback. Thank you. Remove buzz, increase treble, and work on the feedback. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles quickly to the book of John. I am not preaching yet. I just wanted to show you something before we start. John chapter 16. He that to have you asked me nothing in my name. John chapter 16, verse 24. Shall receive that your joy may be full. In the next three minutes, you are going to just make a very, a very short list of your expectations for the year 2005. Ask and you shall receive. Book of Genesis very quickly. Like I told you, you stop writing that list now. Stop writing the list now. You continue it at the end of the service. Genesis chapter 1. Somebody sitting right in front of me is writing the list. Stop writing the list now. You continue at the end of the service. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 And God said Let us make man in our image After our likeness And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea Over the fowl of the air Over the cattle 
and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image i will stop there if you join the two passages to the two verses together if a part of of verse 26 and the a part of verse 27 it reads like this and god said let us make man in our own image after our own likeness so god created man do you see the, the connection now open your bibles to jeremiah chapter one the book of jeremiah chapter one Jeremiah chapter 1 and we are going to be reading verse 5 it's a passage that is familiar for many of us to many of us Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 now verse 4 and 5 then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed thee before I formed thee, in the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Praise the Lord. We will stop there. You can now look up. I am preaching on the subject this morning created for a purpose. You were created for a purpose. I was created for a purpose. Every human being seated, looking at me, hearing my voice here, was created for a purpose. Say after me, I was created for a purpose. Say it louder. I was created for a purpose. Say it louder as a thought and I was created for a purpose now i like you to understand this morning by way of introduction that every product on it was preceded by purpose every product was preceded by purpose in other words, before a manufacturer or a, a producer or a creator will bring out a product, he will define the assignment and the purpose of the product. Purpose precedes creation. let us make man and then god began to define why he wanted to make man now when he finished defining why he would make man then he went ahead to make what he defined are we together here before Henry Ford could make the Ford vehicle, he had the purpose. Let, let, uh, I'm going to make a vehicle that is affordable and available for the average American family. And I'm also going to be able to assemble it in assembly lines to be able to turn it over 
over as frequently as possible because in those days, if you wanted a car, you needed to go to the uh, car manufacturing company and place an order for the car and then wait for it until they manufactured cars one at a time, one at a time, and only the rich could afford it. But Henry Ford, who manufactured the Ford vehicle, came with an idea. He says the average family can also own a car and also we can make the pro process faster so he he had a purpose and then brought forth the product are we together what is purpose what is purpose the purpose of a thing is the objective that provoked the creation of the thing. What objective provoked the creation of the thing is the purpose of a thing. The purpose of a thing is the objective that provoked the creation of that thing. Number two, the purpose of a thing is the desire that necessitated his creation. What, what did the man who make the, made the pressing iron, what was on his mind before he made the pressing iron? That is the purpose of the iron. The person that invented the aircraft, what was on his mind before he brought that invention? That is the purpose of the aircraft. The one that invented the telephone, what was on his mind before he invented the telephone? That is the purpose of the telephone. The person that created Paul and Enche, the person that manufactured Mary or uh, manufactured you, what was on his mind before he manufactured you? That is your purpose. Are we together? The same necessity is the mother of invention. Your purpose is what necessitated your invention. Look at your neighbor. Say you are a product. You are invented by God. There is nobody like you. Are, are we together at all? How many of you seated here understand clearly that there is nobody like you? Nobody has your facial resemblance. Even the most identical twins they don't have, they don't have, they, 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 there are features in their system that still differ. There is nobody in this world of over 6 billion people that has the same chromosomal combinations, the same genetical makeup, the same psychological frame up, the same mental capacity, the same reasoning faculty. In over 6 billion people, nobody has your fingerprint. So that makes you unique. You are an invention. Is God speaking to somebody here? That is why you should not struggle to kill yourself in an attempt to be like somebody because you are unique. You are created with a deliberate intention of the Almighty with a specified agenda. And this year, the good news is you shall enter your purpose. If you are saying him and say it like a believer. Lift your right and say, I am here on purpose. I was created for a purpose. I am on earth for a purpose. I shall fulfill my purpose in the name of Jesus. The purpose of a thing is the result that thing was designed to achieve. The purpose of anything is the result that thing was designed to achieve. Are we together? 
Now, this year you are going to hear some things that will push you out of complacent living into real maturity and manifestation. Because there are some people that are babies permanently until you are preaching at them and say, in the name of Jesus, you shall make it, you shall. Until you are preaching to them like that, they don't want to hear what you are saying. And such people never grow beyond the certain level. They remain at babyhood level. But, but, but there are certain things that will pull out your potential and make you become what you, you should become. And that is what you are hearing now. Look at your neighbor. Say, hear well. Say, open your ears now. Something is about to happen in your life. The result that the thing was desired, the result it was designed to achieve, that is purpose. Every product was created to answer a question. Every product was created to answer a question. There, in other words, there had been a question on ground. And the product, the question of how can I go to London under six hours instead of passing through the waters, the ocean, for six months or for how many weeks? How do I go? For just six hours, I am there. So the, the, the aeroplane answered that question. And everybody seated looking at me right now. You are on earth to answer a question. You are created to meet a need. You are created to offer a solution. That is your purpose. Are we together? Listen to this. The most important discovery of your life is the discovery of purpose. Why am I alive? What am I on earth to accomplish? What question am I here to answer? What solution am I around to offer? What am I to give my generation? The most important question of your life is not the question, it's not the most important discovery of your life. It's not the discovery of who you are to marry. It's not the discovery of millions. It is the discovery of purpose. Are we together? The best place to live on earth is not America. It's not London. It's not Australia. It's not Abuja. It's not Port Harcourt. It's not Lagos. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not anywhere in Europe. The best place to live on earth is inside the purpose. The purpose of your creation. The reason why you are alive. Living inside it. That is the best place to be. Are we together here today? Listen to this. Survival is not the purpose of existence. Again, the aim of life is not survival. No. Survival means I am trying to get a job so I can have what to eat, so I can train my children in school. So I can take care of my wife. So I can take care of my mother and my father. Uh, so I can, uh, I can have a car to drive. Uh, so I can have food to eat. So I can have work to wear. That is ordinary survivor. Many people's lives are resigned to the level of survival. And it is an abomination of creation. Survival 
is never the reason for life. The purpose of life is a life of purpose. I want to blow some things out of your mentality. Because there are some people out there, I want to marry, marry uh, get, a, get children, have a good job, uh, go to school, uh, and then be able to go to America, London, and come back, uh, and be able to ride a nice car. Uh, and that is all that they talk about. That is a miserable life. It's not survival. The people in the village, many of them are there because survival is the objective of their life. But the, the purpose of life is a life of purpose. When you discover purpose, you are set free from limitations of life. Set free. I don't have too much time this morning. But when a little eagle, when an eagle gives birth to an eaglet, are we together? It gives birth to an eaglet, 10,000 feet above sea level. Every day he goes and carries food to the little eaglet and they will be eating and feeding and enjoying. One day, the mother eagle comes back to the nest. He's not looking friendly as usual. He comes and begins to tear the net and tear it apart 10,000 feet above sea level. It's at the level where aeroplanes fly. He begins to tear the net. The children are wondering, the eagles, what is our mother doing today? He begins to tear the net. Listen. And by the time he finishes tearing the net, the little he pushes them down he pushes the little eaglet down ten thousand feet above sea level and the little eaglet is is flying is i mean is is just dropping like a stone afraid and timid what is happening today does my mother now want to kill me and when he's about to hit the ground mother eagle will just fly and pick it and then go up again 10,000 feet above sea level leave him there he begins to dip down like he's going to die and then the mother eagle comes picks it again and take it up in other words i want you to learn something there's something you haven't learned i want to show you something i want you to discover your purpose all of a sudden in the midst of the air the little eaglet the, 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 the wings just come out by accident like that and, and, and as soon as it comes out he realizes that it's not going down like that again and then he begins to fly he say I see then the mother picks it up again and lifts it from 10,000 feet and instead of falling he spread out his wing and takes off no, I am free I am free I can't just die like that I have understood my purpose I now know I now know my potential there are things inside me that will make it impossible for me to just die like that that is how discovery of purpose is when you discover purpose you become limitless are we together here this morning listen to what Miles Monroe said it's one of the men that God has used in the study of purpose he said the greatest tragedy in life is not death many people cry when somebody dies the greatest tragedy in life is not death it is a life without purpose it is not the man that died that is the problem, but the purpose that died with him. It's not the man that died or the woman that died that is a challenge, but the assignment he was created to achieve that died unachieved. I 
I don't know how many people God is speaking to this morning. Is there somebody seated here hearing something? The greatest tragedy in life is not death. It is a life without purpose. The richest place on earth we have been told is the graveyard. It's not the, it's not, it's not the oil wells of Nigeria and Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates. It's not the gold mines, diamond mines of South Africa. It is the graveyard because inside the graveyard are buried potentials that never saw the light of day. Millionaires that were potential millionaires with millions generating ideas that died with those ideas. People that could have been great inventors, certain things God put into them to bring to pass on it that couldn't bring it to pass and died with them. Songs that people could have sang to bless this generation that they couldn't position themselves to receive the inspiration and they died with songs that were not sung. Books in the spirits of people that were meant to liberate people from all manner of calamities that were in the spirit of people and they were buried with those unwritten books industries that were meant to be to be created that were buried with those for whom god proposed it that is the tragedy of a life without purpose this morning you must make up your mind this is the first message of the year 2005 you must make up your mind to not live an aimless purposeless life now I give you six things or five five tragedies of a purposeless life number one a life without purpose is a life at risk again a life without purpose is a high risk life when a person is living without purpose, he is existing at a risk. Let me give you the picture. It is like an aeroplane flying without direction. No radar, no compass is in the air flying not knowing where it is going sooner or later the fuel will finish and it will explode into nothing that is the tragedy of a purposeless life it's like a car driving on the road without steering or the steering has no control that is disaster waiting to happen. You wouldn't die purposeless. Are you hearing me at all? It's a high risk life. Life without purpose is living life as a gamble. You know gambling. Living life without purpose is living life as a gamble is living life as an experiment because the reason why you are alive you don't know it and you are not living that reason so you are you, you are moving about anyhow and accidents destiny accidents are inevitable hello look at a, a, a young girl who does not listen to me you have to hear something today a young girl who does not know the purpose of her life she does not know that her life has any value or meaning she moves about everywhere somebody say eh, eh. sis how are you say fine 
Uh, can you follow me to a so and so place? Why not? Ah, she's, she's a public property. She's a general purpose commodity. She's a collector of seed from diversities of people. Why? She does not understand the purpose of life. When a, ma a woman hires a house and she's living as a prostitute, she is telling you, I don't know why I am around in this world, so I am available to be messed up by anybody. A young boy enters the university and he didn't know the purpose of his life and the purpose of university education so some people met, met him and they said we are members of uh, vikings we are members of um, buccaneers it's a secret court and so, so can you join us and he said uh, uh, what, what would be the benefit of joining you and they said if, if you have if, if you have a girlfriend nobody can snatch her if you if you if you if somebody looks for your trouble will fight for you because he does not know the purpose of his life he joins the cult they cut his hand and take his blood he is afraid of people people are afraid of him he is in final year pharmacy and he says he wants to come out of the secret cult and they tell him where are you going and they pick him up one night and they say we will show you the lesson of your life and 12 hefty men carry him up like that and they leave him from up bam they do that about 12 times and then they carry him from there to an accident and emergency unit from there to the mortuary a life wasted because Purpose was not understood. Hallelujah. This is the end of side A. Please turn over to side B. There must be a vow in your heart never to live an aimless life. Why should I go to the market and I don't know what I went to buy? Why should I go to the motor park? I carried my bag and I arrived at the motor park and I don't know where I am going. And they say, where are you going? You say, you are going everywhere. And there is no vehicle going everywhere. Oh, where are you going? I am going anywhere. And there is no vehicle going anywhere. <sighs> Go to the university, no cause. That is how it is to enter life. And living sleeping waking up every day sleeping waking up every day and you are not aware what you are on earth to achieve but it ends today i didn't hear a loud amen if you believe that say a loud amen number two life without purpose equals time without meaning what? living life without purpose is having time without meaning you have time but you don't know the meaning of the time living a life without purpose you have time at your disposal. You wake up in the morning. This is time, 24 hours. But you don't know what to use the time to pursue. Ah. Ah. 
Is somebody here? You don't know what to use the time to pursue. So somebody comes early in the morning by now. Some of there are some of us by 6 a.m. You have started answering phone call. And you are answering it till 12 midnight. Are you is your purpose in life to be a telephone operator? Now, there are certain times in my life you can never catch me answering phone call. Call me. Oh, no, 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 you can't. I am in the presence of my master. And I am trying to secure more of his grace to fulfill my assignment. You are calling me at that time you are on your own. Doesn't matter the emergency. Any emergency he can't handle, I won't be able to handle it. The day you wake up in the morning and you are wondering what to do with your life, you are in trouble. The day you have so much time available and you don't know what to do with the time available, it is trouble. Because there are some of us that are looking for more time. To be able to accomplish what we are on earth to accomplish. It's time without meaning. You have time and the time becomes a burden. Why, why, why is that? 24 hours is even too long, sir. They should have made it 12 hours. That is a complaint of a purposeless person. Today it shall change. That amen is not good enough. Say a louder amen. Number three, life without purpose is existence without choices. Again, life without purpose is existing without choices. In other words, you live your life not to choice but to chance anything can happen by chance negative things no choice life without purpose is living at the mercy of situations and circumstances life without purpose is life without priorities. Example. I am a young man. Anybody hearing me? I am a young man. Listen to me. I am a young man. I just finished my medical education. Right now, I, 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 I am... I am I have finished my youth service. I have finished everything. And I'm, I'm working in the hospital. Or I'm doing my residency program. And my mother, my sisters, sent to me from somewhere and they said, we have found a good girl for you to marry. And the mother of the girl is a good woman. And the girl is hard working. And she is also from your tribe. You say, okay. All of you like the girl. You say, yes, okay. Uh, okay, go and see the father for me. I'm coming. From there, he goes home. He meets a girl for the first time that he has never known from nowhere. Because he has no purpose for his life, he has no choices. I am ready. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and conduct. It doesn't. You see, if you don't know what you are to achieve, you don't even know what you want. If you don't know your purpose on it, if you don't know why you are existing, you don't even know what you want. No. No. From my scratch as a, as, a, as a young man going into the university preaching the gospel here and there, I knew my life assignment. I knew what I was on earth to achieve. And it was clear who could be my wife. 
because not everybody can be married to me because it takes a person who compliments my purpose to be my partner it takes a person that compliments my purpose on it to be my partner so it is not a matter of the girl final it's not a matter of we are from this it's not it's not the issue at all I am speaking to you from the passion of my heart. Many people have wasted their lives because of lack of purpose and eventually wrong choices. I knew one day I was working with a young lady. She was the one, she invited me to a meeting. He says um, a missionary meeting. Uh, that must have, must have been about um. um 18 years ago, 87. Uh, can we go to a certain meeting and we're going? Young man, young girl, we're talking. No motives. Nobody say you will marry me, I'll marry nothing. We're talking. And st statements began to come out of her mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. She started talking what she likes and what she doesn't like. That was the last day I saw her. Because from the content of her mouth, out of the abundance of her, she, I, I, I discovered who she was and I realized this is not a candidate for my destiny. How many lives have been destroyed? And the young man is in America. He's in America. He's working as an accountant in a firm. So, uh, Jenny, uh, can you marry the man? Say, is he in America? Ah. I go go. You see, in America, hmm, America. At least I have been trying to see how I can go to America one day. See how New York looks like. Carry their dollars and spend. And the man is there, a cocaine pusher, an India hemp smoker, a wife bitter. He has sacked two wives already. But you were not aware. Young Christian, good looking sister, fervent in the spirit, but purposeless in life. Catapulted to America, to destined to a, a lifetime of aimlessness. Under two months, he slapped the hell out of your life. And America is not Tunisia. To say, let me go home and tell my mother. <laughs> you know, if you have prop, if you have trouble at home, it is easy to handle. But when you have trouble abroad, <laughs> and no mother, no father, there are some people who are there. They have been in jail for years, and there are people at home who are not aware. Please don't miss your purpose. Life is too short to experiment with it. It's too, it's too, it's too brief to make it an experiment. It's too brief. Purpose will give you choices. It will make you understand who can be your friend and who cannot be your friend. You are not going in my direction. You don't deserve my association. I am telling you the things that have saved me up till now. That has made my face to look like a flint. I don't care how much money you have. I, you can't control me. I don't care what is your position. And I don't care how close you are to me in blood relationship. If you are not full facing where I am going, you can't survive around me. Are we together here today? Please avoid the tragedy of a wasted life. It shall not be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, 
Life living without purpose is living without energy. Living without purpose is living without energy. Living is living without enthusiasm. Living without excitement. It's living just merely existing. You want me to show you the most excited people in this world? You want me to show you the most enthusiastic people on earth? Ah, it is those people who are pursuing what they are proposed for. It's those people who are engaged in doing what they love. It's those people who are pouring their life into a worthy purpose that they believe in. They are the most excited. Excited. Ex every day for them is almost Christmas. But listen, my brothers and my sisters, when your boss in the office is begging you to walk, say, I beg now. Be excited. Ah, brother, you have no purpose. You, you, you don't know your you, Either you don't know your purpose or you are positioned in the wrong place. If you are pursuing what you are created to pursue, your life will be the most excited life. You want to see the glory of an aircraft? Let it rise from the tarmac and enter the air. There is one pilot. Uh, that we have some, some two pilots here. Uh, in, uh, some few pilots in the church here. And I was discussing with one of them uh, one day and I said, I, I want to learn piloting. He said, yes, it's, it's possible. It is good. He's, an, he's, he's, a, he's a fighter pilot. And, and I told him, I said, what will you do? Say one day maybe I will carry you so we can just um, sit together and fly. I said, I said, I said, what will you do? He said, I will, I will show you some maneuvers that if you don't take time, I will say, Daddy, you won't answer. <laughs> I, I said, what will you do? He said, he will carry the aircraft and point it straight like this. He said, then he will turn it and face the legs upward. And then your, 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 your face is up. When you think you are looking down, you are seeing the sky. He said, then the whole gravity will be on your, on your as if the world is in, is in your stomach. He said, at that time, if I say that, you say, I'm not sure you will be able to answer. <laughs> well, I feel like saying, try me and let us see. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you following? Around? If you want to see the glory of the aircraft, where do you take it? Is, that is where it was created to exist. You want to see the glory of the tilapia. You want to see the glory of the shark. Put it in an ocean. You will see the maneuvers you never saw. Ah. But you will find your purpose. I said you will find your purpose. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Shout the loudest amen. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I will live my life on purpose. Say it louder in the name of Jesus. I will not waste my life. I will not waste my existence. If you believe that, say a loud amen. Number five, living without purpose is living in indiscipline. Indiscipline, careless living is, 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 a, is, a, is a reason, I mean, it's an outcome of purposeless living. Hello? Hello? Are you still hearing me? When, it, when, when there is no purpose, life is careless, carefree. You can sleep anytime you want and wake up when? 
Anytime you want, you see that 33 year old guy who is still living with his senior brother or living with his uncle or living in his father's house. He has a degree, he didn't have a degree, but he doesn't care. When people are dressing up and going to work by 8 a.m., that is when he is putting gear five in the sleep. He rolls over on the bed and covers himself with a blanket. He said, cold, I am not impressed. By 10 a.m., he turns again. And when he woke, wakes up, he ties the wrapper and walks to the kitchen to find out if food was ready before they went to work. He comes out of that place and sits in the parlor and begins to watch home movies until those who will give him food come back from work and he is not aware that time is not on his side because he has no purpose. You know, many times my bed, the bed on which I sleep, will reject me by 2 a.m. So what are you still doing here? Uh, even if I have to sleep back uh, an hour or two later, uh, I mean, uh, two, three hours later for, for about an hour or two, uh, but at that time I am... My wife told me this night, she said, won't you at least sleep a little for the, sake of, for the service? I said, I'm, I'm in order. Alright? Because there are certain things burning in your spirit. Certain things that must be accomplished. You know that you don't have eternity to fulfill destiny. I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. It instills discipline. You don't spend money anyhow if you know the purpose of your resources you don't waste your time anyhow if you know you don't sit down gisting with somebody for three hours aimlessly if you know the, you, the purpose of your existence are you following what i'm saying you don't you don't have to twenty thousand hit your hand next thing market is there any new shoe i buy 50,000 hits your hand. The next place is a fashion designer. What is the latest? As if your purpose is to teach the world how to dress. And yet there is no money in the account. Nowhere is dressed from head to toe as he's coming to the church. If he by mistake pours the granite of a little girl hawking by mistake he pours it away he's dressed about 60,000 but he has no money to settle the girl I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about I, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about this year no joke look at your neighbor say no play Say it is seriousness. He say it is by force and by fire. I must make impact. I must fulfill my purpose. Let me just round up. I have too much to say, but I have no time to say them. I will continue the message next Sunday. And I, I dare you not to miss one service this year. But if you want, you are free. People are looking for different things in life. And if you want to be a Sunday, Sunday Christian, come up you. You are free. I mean, what you are, nobody knows what you are looking for. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Purpose brings control and coordination to life. When, when, when you, are, you are out for purpose, when you are alive on assignment, 
it brings control it brings coordination to the whole of your life when you are alive for a purpose it brings shape it brings shape to your destiny it tells you what you can do and what you cannot do one of my major assignments on earth is as a worshiper and that is one of the major assignments of all of us and I want to go to a great estate in worship. I saw a young man playing the saxophone and he plays it the way I've never seen it before. And I want to play the saxophone not to, for sure, but I want to do it in my closet and I'll also do it publicly. He played and played and played. What? He con he 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 he's playing this thing and he's not breathing for the... You, you, you are not seeing him breathing for, the, for, for 30 minutes non-stop. I show him, I say, tell, tell me how to do this thing. So I made him my tutor. I told him, I said, in the issues of saxophone, you are my teacher. In the issues of spirituality, I am your pastor. You have what to give me, I have what to give you. He said, yes, sir. Are we together here today? It brings control and coordination to your life. You know what you, you know what you are after, and you know how to go about it. Now, before I conclude this message this morning, there are two purposes everybody will fulfill. How many? I call it one is the general purpose of all of humankind. There is a general purpose, and there is a specific purpose. Somebody say general. And somebody say specific. Now the general purpose is worship and relationship with the creator. Worship and relationship with the creator. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21 he said, these people have I formed for myself they will show forth my praises. Another of our general purpose is the release of kingdom, dominion, and authority on it. Let us make man in our image. Let them have dominion. If you are working in CBN, if you are working in, where do you work? Where do you work? Call your own. If you don't have work, say I'm self-employed. Ah, you don't understand. You will understand soon. Where are you? Where, where do you work? CBN, NNPC, Dynamics International Gospel Center anywhere you are your a major purpose you are to you are to dis display is to release kingdom dominion power and authority people around where you are should see out of your life the power and the principles of the kingdom people around where you are where you live they should see out of your life the power and the principles of the kingdom again i will talk about that at another date but listen as we end this service every person seated here you have a specific purpose somebody say specific purpose say it louder say specific purpose Say, say, lift your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I am aware and I am convinced that on earth I have a specific purpose. Louder, I am aware, I am convinced that on earth here I have a specific purpose. I am here for a purpose and I will fulfill that purpose listening as I round up. If you are not needed, you will not be created. God is a God of deliberate intention. 
well set objectives if you are not needed on earth you will not be created your reason why you are on earth is not for population purpose you have an answer to provide you have a need to meet you have a solution to offer somewhere somehow listen the reason why you are a nigerian and not an american is for a purpose the reason why you are a nigerian and not an Australian is for a purpose. Some of you are trying to run to London. You are wasting your time. A rat in Nigeria will never become an elephant in America. He goes to America, he might be become a little bigger rat. A lizard in Umahia will never become a crocodile in Scotland. Tell us. You understand what I'm saying? The reason why you were not born in the days of the Bible is for a purpose. The reason why you are born at a time and a season like this is for a purpose. The reason why God chose your mother and your father to bring you into this world is for a purpose. Don't regret coming from where you came from. Don't regret being given birth to by your father and your mother. Don't, be, don't regret being a Nigerian. You are in this country for such a season as this for a well-defined purpose can i provoke you a little i don't consider going to any country in this world as a privilege i don't i go there anywhere anytime god gives me the grace and the release to go i go there purely to, for the privilege of those to whom i am sent many people molest themselves because they don't understand that purpose you are not inferior to anybody in this world if you know your purpose I want to provoke you any money you want to give me that God does not want you to give me may it not leave your hand <laughs> aye, 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 aye. when you understand purpose you become a dangerous person money anybody will give this church that it is not God who is giving it may that money never arrive if you understand purpose you will not be a beggar you will not be a borrower you will not look pitiable you will not be looking for sympathy you will be looking for who to sympathize with if they need it. Ah, what I'm talking now has made some people glad. Others are sad. Some are mad. Why did I waste my life all these years? It's not too late. I tell you, it is not too late. Abraham started to fulfill his purpose at the age of 75. Moses started at the age of 80. How old are you? Stand on your feet, walk to seven people. Praise God. Would you believe that you've been tremendously blessed and imparted by this message? 
look forward to seeing you in church on Tuesday by 10 a.m. for Healing and Deliverance Hour, Thursday by 5.30 p.m. for our Power Communion Service, and on Sunday for Super Celebration Services. For further inquiry, call us on 09 670 3874